What's up, y'all? So we couldn't have Bible study tonight, but I still wanted to give you guys this word because it really blessed my soul. And I'm on set tonight, um, but we still get to see each other. <laughs> win, win. Okay, so I hope you guys listen to the worship song about waiting on God because it really ties into this sermon and, you know, it just like gets you in the vibe to hear from the Lord. Um, so, I'm going to pray us in and we're going to get into it, okay? Okay. Oh, dear Lord, thank you so much for bringing us um, to this moment. Thank you for giving me this word to give to your children, Father God. Thank you for it being a blessing to me. I hope it is a blessing to them, Father God. I pray that you would guide my lips, guide my mind, Father God. Take away any part of me that wants to be perfect and that wants to get it all right, Father God. Um... And I just pray that you would just give me everything I need to um, give this word, Father God. I'm excited to give this word um, just because of where I am in my life, Father God. I pray that each and every person under the sound of my voice gets to take something from this word, Father God. That it blesses them in some capacity, Father God, and that they are able to bless others. I pray that it would be a comfort to them. I pray that it would be insight and revelation to them, Father God. I pray that you would do your thing as you do your thing in their life, Father God. Um, and we just thank you. I thank you for keeping my people alive, Father God, um, that they're able to hear this word. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Okay. So the title um, of this message is called Applying the Pressure, um, but not like God's... You know, it's just called applying the pressure, baby. And you take it how you want to take it, okay? Because it's time to apply that pressure, all right? Okay, that's the season that we're in, all right? The pre the pressure is being applied, all right? So, yeah, that's the season that we're in. Um, So, today's message is going to be a little bit different than how we normally go about it. And um, that's on that. Okay, great. So I have this new hobby where I am regrowing kitchen scraps. <laughs> it sounds funny when I say it, but no, seriously, like trying to find like a better way to make waste um, or trying to find better ways to deal with my waste in general, like using vegetable scraps and freezing it and then making vegetable broth or like using the scraps and regrowing things. So the first thing I did was an avocado. So I'm regrowing an avocado tree from an avocado. And maybe you're not new to this, you true to this. And um, yeah, it just takes a long time if you want it to produce fruit. Um, yeah, but it's really great to be able to see it being done. And as I was going through this process, the Lord was, oh man, he was speaking okay about how we also go through the same process that i was doing with this seed so i wanted to let you guys in on that because it was so good and so as i was just like going through it the lord said we have things because someone was patient and brave enough to allow their creation to grow i'm gonna say that one more time we have things because someone was patient and brave enough to allow their creation to grow Think about that. Whether that's the food you eat, the phone you use, the laptop, social media, whatever thing is your clothes, honey. Someone was patient and patient enough and brave enough to let the creation grow or to allow themselves to grow. And I pray that after we have this little key key moment, that you too are more patient and more brave to allow yourself and your creation to grow. Okay, so the first step you do when taking the avocado seed to make a tree, baby, is you have to remove the seed from the fruit. Obvi. So the planter must remove the seed from the fruit to start the process of growing the tree or whatever you're growing. Obviously, right? Okay, it doesn't sound that bad. But then when the Lord showed me how that happens in our lives, I was like, oh, baby. So... I don't know if y'all ever been there like me, but have you produced something? Like you walked with God, you produced the thing like you were supposed to. People are eating from it, baby. People are getting blessed from your ministry or, you know, you working on your talents, you know what I'm saying? Or people are being blessed from you being whole through a situation and you're blessing others and then the Lord takes you away from it. 
This has happened to me. I don't know if it's happened. You've got to ask you to do something, okay? And you did it. And then he removes you from it. Or then he shows you a vision of that thing that looks nothing like what you just produced. This happened to me in relationship and in this ministry. Walking with God, he told me what to do with the ministry. I followed it. And then he was like, hey, I need you to step back. I don't need you to lead this month. I need you to listen. And I'm like, okay. Then he shows me vision of um, just, an just another vision I have not seen of my ministry and what it's supposed to do. And I'm like, that ain't got nothing to do with what we was just doing. You know what I'm saying? And so I don't know if that's happened to you or maybe you're in a relationship and you done fought for that relationship to stay, baby. You done fought for the job. You done fought for whatever it is in your life and then the Lord removes it from you or he removes you from it or he gives you another vision that had nothing to do <clears throat> with what you saw to produce what you have now and if you have that hurts that hurts because now God's asking you to walk this way but your heart is still on what you just produced because it was your baby or maybe it was your real baby you know what I'm saying <laughs> but either way it hurts you have to break up with that thing. God is removing you from that thing. You feel like you wasted your time, okay? Come on, somebody. You feel like you've been played, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many things that go into that. And nothing hurts worse than when you feel like you're walking with God and then you feel like you heard God wrong or you feel like God played you. Like, that hits on another level. You like, God, I partnered with you because I didn't want to get played no more. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be with who was true. But what God was saying is just because he is taking you away from it does not mean that it was wrong or bad, but that it was the vessel or transportation to get you to where you are now. And that made me think about Noah and the ark, right? Because God had Noah build this ark, right? And it took him from A to B and it protected him. And that's what God is saying. What you built helps you get to where you are now where I'm able to remove you and plant you into something bigger to have you do another thing. It doesn't mean that what you just produced is no longer yours. You don't have dominion over it. No, it's still going to work for you, but God gave you more than one talent. And it doesn't mean you're better than anyone else. It just means that God gave you more than one talent. And so now that you have produced in that area of where you are talented, God is now rebuilding you all over again to be able to produce in another area of your life. So God didn't change his mind about you. What you built with God will be used, but the vision you got from God wasn't the full vision. And it's really important to know that in partnering with God is God will not always give you everything at, at one moment in time because Jesus, we cannot handle that. Like if you look back over your life, right? When you first got with God or maybe you're not with God yet, but if you look on where you've grown as a human, if God would have told you at the beginning, hey, it's going to take you about five years to get that together, two years in that relationship, but it's going to make you who you are today to be able to get that job, to be able to be married, to be able to have that ministry, to be able to start that business, you would have been like, well, baby, ain't nobody taking them years or, you know, that just puts a lot of burden and pressure on you and God doesn't put more on you than you can bear. So he gives you information you do it he reveals something else and that's how it works so removing it isn't your end but it's the beginning of god doing so much more than what you envisioned so much more and i feel like sometimes we forget our place god is the creator he's creating in us he we don't need to give him permission to do anything in our lives because he's the creator that's like if you're creating something and the thing you was creating wanted you to ask permission before you try something new. Absolutely not. And God's not out here, oh, well, let me try this, let me try this. No, he already knows everything that's going to happen. Anything that he wants done in your life is for your good because God is a good father. So the second thing you do with this seed after you remove it from the fruit is that you soak it in water. 
Now, the planter soaks the seed in the water overnight so that it's easier to take the skin off of the seed, okay? Now, I'm assuming because the water can just penetrate the seed instead of like trying to push through the protective barrier or the skin to get to the seed. That's what I'm assuming, but I don't know. So, for me in this season, I feel like it's like I'm drowning in my thoughts. Like, once the Lord was like, this is where I want the ministry to go, or this is where, yeah, this is where I want the ministry to go. Um, this season can, can, can really easily go into depression or really go left because you just feel like completely full with all of these thoughts. I'm like, what is this? I, I don't understand. Like you're, you're just literally going insane because you can't even fathom Especially if, <laughs> especially in ministry, God I'm supposed to be leading people to you, but I wasn't even following you, right? What? You know what I'm saying? Like, you really just start, like, you know, it's, yeah, you really start questioning yourself. And this happened um, in relationship to, okay, so my camera turned off and I don't, I don't know where we were. Okay, but, um, okay, so my camera turned off unexpectedly and, uh, yeah, so, um, back to the soaking in the water, um, yes, so, one of the great things about being in a relationship with God is that you're in partnership with someone, and so, you can literally go to him instead of walking away from him, and let him know, hey, this hurt my feelings, or hey, I'm disappointed because I had this expectation, like, that is so important to do, and I feel like that's kind of what we miss in our relationships in life. Not just with significant others and spouses, but with our friendship relationships, with our work relationships. Instead of going to that person and be like, hey, this is where this hurt me because of this, we just walk away and we just be like, okay, they cancel, baby. You know, we love to cancel somebody. But the great thing with God is that, like, he will give you more wisdom in that area and he will show you more things and it's an opportunity for you guys to get closer and isaiah 55 and 8 y'all know i stand by this scripture but it says that god's thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways that is facts we will be disappointed we will sometimes have expectations that will not be met but that does not mean that god is not a good god actually by him not lowering the bar and giving you those expectations just shows how good of a father he is by because he's gonna blow your mind you know what i'm saying like the scripture says he does things that we can't think dream or imagine he can't do that if he just gives us our expectations all the time no god wants to blow your mind allow him to blow your mind and so this is the part where you have to let out all those feelings those pains those thoughts and grieve over what you were just taken from i cannot stress this enough take time to grieve before you just move on. I know I'm the person, let's be real, I don't be wanting to grieve. I just, I just wanna move on, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I, I used to show that there used to be a fruit in my relationships, like my relationships with um, men would last like two weeks, maybe some months, because I would just, I would just move on. Like, I'm just like, uh, whatever you know, that whole cancel culture, and I would just move on. But that's not how you grow in a relationship, especially with God. Because God wants to shine light on those areas so you can heal when you move on. Because if you don't, Lord, if you don't, if you don't open up that area, then you're going to move in brokenness in some level. Or you're going to keep getting triggered if something like that happens in your life later down the road. And so allow God in and trust him. And when you're open to him and you seek his face and you read the Bible and you, you listen to worship songs or you just invite him in when you're looking at nature, you just seek his face and he will give you insight on that area and you will begin to trust him again, but you have to open yourself up to him and you'll figure out that God keeps his promises. Um... And once your trust is established again, then the next step comes. And that is when the skin and protective layer is taken off, right? But how are we going to allow God to strip us of things that aren't serving us if we don't even trust him with something that he just took us from? You have to be able to heal in that area to trust him to allow to start stripping things away from you. 
because this this part hurts. Um, so they remove the skin of the fruit because it allows it to grow faster, right? So God will begin stripping things off you that don't serve you. Things that you put on that helped you become a better person or helped you fulfill that business plan or or whatever it is, that, that thing that helped you feel comfortable and gave you that, that familiarity that kept you to be able to produce last season, God is now stripping that from you because it's not serving you in this season. So what is God stripping from you that you thought you needed? Is it your usual clique of friends? Is it your staff, or I call it your Moses staff, where God um, was telling Moses to help lead the Israelites out and to perform these things in front of Pharaoh so Pharaoh could know who the one true God was, you know what I'm saying? And so through Moses' staff, he would produce water, split the waves, win fights. Like he did so much stuff through his staff that when God told him to speak to something instead of, to speak to the rock instead of hitting it with his staff, he didn't speak to it because he didn't trust in his voice. He trusted in what God had been using more than he trusted the God who gave him the staff in the first place. And so maybe you're stuck on a way that you were working in the past and God is like, I allowed that to work then. I am the secret sauce. Like I am the reason why things work in the season when they work. You have to trust God over the thing that made it work. Um, whatever was added to you to help you produce on that level last season, maybe it was some thoughts or some ideologies, maybe habits, maybe something that you need to look into because maybe the root is what God is trying to strip off of you. Like maybe you like to always produce great things, right? You want to produce amazing, great things, but maybe the root of that, and I'm talking about myself here, maybe the root of that could be you care what people think. That was a huge thing for me. Like I was like, oh, I want to produce this, this, and that. But as God was stripping away the layers of me, it was like, no, sis, you really care what people think more than you want to do what God said. That's not ever cute. You know what I'm saying? Like we have to be um, confident in ourselves and move in healing and not move in brokenness. And sometimes you don't know when you're moving in brokenness. And so God has to strip off those layers and just because God is stripping you does not mean that it's all bad again. It's just not serving you the way you need to be served. All you need is yourself at your core with the Holy Spirit and God with you. God is stripping that pride. He's stripping that independentness. He's stripping that I'm just going to chase that bag and get this money motto over everything. He wants you, that transparent, beautiful version of yourself that... Oh, that just loves so deeply, that's not afraid, that doesn't move in worry, that chases their dreams, that has faith. He wants that naked version of you so he can grow it and plant it somewhere else. Because that's when the doors are going to open. You can't get the blessings being a fake version of yourself. The world is responding to your true self. And God is trying to break you down to that true version of yourself so you can see what he sees the beauty over your life, the calling over your life, that you are needed in this world or you would not be here. And he is trying to grow that because that is what people respond to. And that is how people get blessed. And your purpose is designed, is, is connected to someone else's destiny. And so the next thing you do is wrap the seed in a paper towel and you put it in like a Ziploc baggie, right? This blew my mind <laughs> on how relatable we are to nature. It's beyond to me. So the seed is wrapped so it can get the hydration and oxygen that it needs to grow, right? Okay, great. God will cover you. This, God loves you so much because this is the step before you get placed into darkness, before you get placed in wilderness. God loves you so much that he's already covered you before you even go to the next step. God will not strip you unless you are covered by him. God cares about you. He cares about what you're worried about. He, care, he, he cares about what makes you comfortable, but not to a point where it strips you or, not, or it doesn't allow you to be the best version of yourself, the version that he saw before he formed you in your mother's womb. 
that free version of yourself. Yeah, he's not going to compromise that so you can be comfortable. But God does care about those things. Like we look in um, in Genesis after Adam and Eve ate from ate from the fruit in the garden when they were naked and they were afraid. God still clothed them. God cares about your worries, but he doesn't want you to not see him. Like God is bigger than any worry. But if you're worrying more than, than you believe God will fix it, then that's an issue. So God will go before you in the darkness or the wilderness season. In Exodus, we see how God leads his people, the Israelites, through a pillar of a cloud and through fire um, so they can see at night. In Psalms 97 and 4, it says, He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and your protection. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Fam. The promises that God has given you, you can use to fight against those thoughts of doubt or confusion. Use it as your protection and stand on that solid ground. Like God, like have you ever been in a moment where you were like, wow, I was being covered in that. Maybe you call it intuition. Maybe you just call it luck. But I call it the one and only God who has your back because you are covered. I remember one time I was driving um, on the freeway in L.A., and I was like, I'm not covered. Literally, as soon as I said it, my car spun, literally spun on the freeway for no reason. I literally did two donuts and slid up against, you know, they have like walls and I slid up against the wall. And I was like, and God was like, you are always covered. What? Literally when I was doing donuts, like, I saw the opposite, like, I saw cars coming to me on the freeway as I was spinning in a circle. Like, I spun back this way, and I saw them coming to me. And then I spun again, and I saw them coming to me again. And then I slid up against the wall. And I was like, God, I have no control over my life. You have all the control over my life, and you are covering me. Y'all are so intense. And the cars were, like, far, far enough away where it's, like, they were slowing down. But, it's like, no one really had to, like, press on their brakes. It was insane. Um, but just because you are covered doesn't mean that you will not be tested. Does not mean that you will have, that doesn't mean you get to skip the darkness season. Nope. Nope. Um, so his promises have not changed just because he's orchestrating things differently. And you will be placed into the darkness because that is where you're called to grow. And so that's the next thing you do is you put the seed in the dark. And so the seeds store chemical energy that can grow in darkness. And it isn't until they have exhausted that energy does the plant need light to grow. Oh! Okay. When a seed is placed in the darkness, this is when the planter gets to see if it can actually grow, if their roots come. It's a test. It's a test to see if you have bad seed or a good seed. And what the Lord was telling me is, you are a good seed. The only time, the only way you will not produce roots in your darkness season is if you quit. And quitting is quitting. Like you don't ever go back. You know what I'm saying? Like breaks, stumbles, sure. But quitting means you never go back. You are set up for success. And this was so interesting to me because I'm just like, all the seed needs is darkness and water to produce a root. God has already placed everything inside of you with the Holy Spirit and placed you in your environment for your dark season for you to produce a root. He's not asking you to do anything. We don't ask. I'm not asking this seed to do nothing in the dark, baby. But with everything that's inside of you in that darkness season and God putting what you need, wrapping you around with his love, wrapping you around with his insight and covering you and you get put in a baggie like nothing is going to come take you out nothing is gonna come to you you know what i'm saying because you're protected yo this this really blew my mind like we are so protected it's ridiculous fam you have nothing on me because i rock with jesus y'all it's insane it's insane so okay the darkness is a necessity for your growth at the same time it is being a test it was a necessity, people, for Jesus to be in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights to get tempted by the devil. He had to be alone. He had to fight back against the enemy's lies with the word 
um, in the enemy's manipulation, and he had to be hungry. All this stuff had to happen for Jesus to grow and also be tested. And who was he led by? The Holy Spirit. God is leading you into this season, but it is pivotal. It is a necessity for you to grow and be tested at the same time. And so, <laughs> this water and darkness gives the seed everything it needs, not everything it wants. So this season, you have no lack, fam, because you have everything that you need. God already went before you, set up the environment, set up everything you need to grow. And all you need to be is to be and to wait on the Lord and trust that he's doing a mighty work in you. In these seasons, it's really hard to see if you're even growing at all. But people start to see that are around you. And you'll start to notice once you get out of that season, you lack nothing. I don't care if your sister, cousin, mother, brother, them, everyone in your circle, you see like, it seems like they're all growing and you seem like you're being stagnant because you're in the darkness, but you're not. You're right on time. You're on God's time. And that's the time that you should always try to be on. Not whatever society is saying because they don't know you. And what I'm also learning about plants is sometimes they look like they're flourishing, but the root is rotting. So it's only a matter of time before it dies, but we can't see that. That's why you should never judge people or assume or compare. God needs you to be alone in this season. Oh, oh. you can't depend on no one like you depend on Jesus in this season. And people aren't going to have what you need in this season because uh, God only has it. So that's why you got to press into God and, you know, keep a circle around you, obviously, to encourage you and pray for you and to give you wise counsel. But... Your daily bread that you need to get through the day, baby, to even fathom the thought of getting through the day is going to come from Jesus. Um, again, you have all you need with the Holy Spirit and God. And once your resources are maxed out, is the only, re is the only way that God will move you to the next stage. But you complaining about the little resources you have. You're too discouraged by what you see to look at God and notice that he set you up for the win. You're not being stagnant. You're being a seed. He's trying to plant you. You are not behind. You are right on time. Redirect your thoughts. Get into scripture. Talk to the Lord. Because one day you're going to look up and be like, Whoo! I done grew some roots. <laughs> so the next step is your seed will grow roots. And so maybe it's definitely going to be in roots in an area that you didn't know about. Like you didn't even think you would grow roots there. Maybe it's, it's patience for you. Maybe it's generational curses being broken off of your life. Or maybe it's just roots. It, it's that foundation that you need to get planted in that new area that you didn't even know you had a talent in. You didn't even know God set it aside for you. You know what I'm saying? to walk in and dominate, you know what I'm saying? And so your foundation has to be in God or you're not gonna be able to build on some on the everlasting rock. People are subject to things, to money, but God isn't subject to anybody, he is God. So that's why your foundation has to be in him because he's not shaken by things. He's not surprised by things. He's not making guesses. So that's why your foundation has to be in God before you get planted, which is why God goes through preparing you, peeling off the skin, putting you in the dark, because he's stripping off all the things that are gonna be a hindrance to you and the people who are connected to you. And this season may feel like you are just fighting an uphill battle, baby, that you may die on. Not literally, but figuratively. Um, but once you've done all that you can do and you produced with, with everything you've been given, you maxed out all your resources when you were at your last bit of, I'm about to blow everything up, is when you get transferred to the light. And so seeds get taken from the darkness and go into the light because now the seed had is exhausted all of its um, resources. Now it needs the light to continue to grow. This season is so beautiful because this is when we get to learn from ourself how good God is and that, his, that he will give you strength when you've ran out. Oh, man. That is the best. He will give you what you need. 
I can't tell you how many times I've been like, God, I need the strength to get through because I cannot do this on my strength. And he gives me the strength to press through. God will continuously give you what you need. And you get to see, oh my gosh, I grew in patience and I found love for, for things that I didn't even know I liked. Um, I have so much more self-worth and confidence. You know, I'm not looking at human validation. I finally understand that I'm important. That once you... Once you get to your root, it start. Once you get your root, it starts growing in your actions. Your root is pure, and in God, we see it in your actions. We see the way that you move. People gravitate towards you. You know, you get to see that God really is who He says who He says He is. He's really true, and God wants to give you more insight. You get to. See I'm sorry, I'm just getting really excited. You also get to see like what he's trying to do next. You feel like you're really in, in a more, like in a closer knit partnership with God and you get to see his goodness. And that is so important because can't nobody tell you about your God when you've been in this, these seasons where you know God for yourself. You don't need someone else to tell you. And so, once you've grown to your limit, you'll be placed in another beneficial environment. And this is so interesting because I just feel like in life, that's how we go from season to season. Once you maxed out your resources, you grew how you were supposed to grow. You know, you got closer with God then God moves you to another environment or another space that will help you grow even further and bigger and more broad. And so, Will you stay planted? Like when you get transferred to the soil and God plants you into your new ground, your new territory, will you stay planted even if it doesn't work your expectation? Will you stay even though you don't feel ready or prepared? Don't let the enemy play you, okay? And be like, you're not ready, you're not prepared. Because what we learned earlier is that God covers you and he's not gonna put you in any situation that you ain't ready for. And so... When God plants you, you're able to see what your territory is, baby. In Joshua 1 and 3, God tells Joshua, every place, every place that your foot shall tread, I have given to you. And in verse 4, he starts to explain the places. Joshua was following God to the promised land. He was following Moses, who was following God. He was also following God. And then Moses died. So now he's really following um, the Lord to lead the Israelites to their promised land. So... Where God has planted you or will plant you is your territory. He has given it to you for you to have dominion. He's given it to you to reproduce, to, to build abundantly, to blow your mind. Where you are planted, no matter what it looks like, it must make room for you because you are on assignment following God. It doesn't matter if people are in the land, which happened to the Israelites. It doesn't matter who is coming against you. They must make room for you where you are called. Whatever that industry looks like, whatever that family looks like, whatever that idea looks like, whatever that societal thing that's like surrounding where God is putting you, it must make room for you. The Bible says that God opens doors that no man can shut. No man can shut the door that God opened for you. And so when you are low in strength, your father will fill you up. Do not be discouraged. You take dominion. You go off. Go off. Okay? Take in the moment that you have been planted after all this time and know that you have everything you need to flourish but don't, don't get so caught up in things producing that you forget the one who allowed you to produce in the first place, which is God. And so family, I want to give you some one-liners and some questions. I'm also reading the Woman Evolve book by Sarah Jakes Roberts, and I feel like some of the points that she said really tied into this, which really excited me. So... The enemy is after the trust you have and God's vision of your life. This is really good. She was talking about Adam and Eve. And the enemy isn't necessarily always after your fruit, but he is after the trust you have in God's vision of your life. Do not stop trusting God because things don't seem like they're going the way 
that you think that they should go. Trust God. No one wants to be stagnant. It happens when people are afraid of the unknown. Be more gracious to people who are, are more stagnant. Help them out. Be kind to yourself and trust yourself and get to the root of your thoughts. Is that thought based in fear or is it based in faith? Because it can't be both. We have to make moves, family, and I want you to trust God enough and trust yourself enough to know that you will not fail when you're parting with God, that everything will work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And that is in the word. All it takes is one question from the enemy to have you question yourself, the power, purpose, and potential God granted. All it takes for one question for the enemy to slip in, a little doubt, a little confusion. That's why we have to use the promises that the Lord has given us to fight off those thoughts. And so here are three questions. What part of this plant cycle are you in? Are you in the cycle where you were just taken from what you were, for what you just produced? Are you the seed being plucked from the fruit? Are you getting stripped of your protective layers? Are you getting stripped of all the things? Is God breaking you down to who you truly are, that pure, transparent version of yourself? Are you in the season where God just did that and he's wrapping you in his love? Are you in a darkness season? Are you coming to the light season or are you being planted? Take time to think about it. Also, what questions keep haunting you? If you change the root, you can change the fruit. If the root of your question is brokenness, that's the fruit that you're going to get. Those are the actions you're going to take. But when it's, when it's rooted in healing, that's the fruit you get. That's the actions you get. So what thoughts are haunting you? And what's the root of that thought? For me, uh, let's say, like, I'm not worthy. Okay? I'm not worthy because... Write out. Write that out. I'm not worthy because... I started late. Let's just say that. I started late because blah, 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 blah. I blah, 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 because blah, 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 blah. And keep going until you can't blah, 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 blah anymore. And you'll get to the root of what that thing is. Actions typically come from what we feel and our feelings come from our thoughts. So when we think something, we got a feeling about it. And then that's how we act. But we need to get to the root of the thought when we have a feeling that way we can change the root and produce a better action and then the last one which you kind of already touched on is are the thoughts coming from fear or faith so that is it i hope that has blessed you i'm gonna pray us out dear lord i thank you so much for this word that you have given us on tonight father god i pray that it has blessed um everyone under the sound of my voice, Father God, that they have learned something new, Father God, or they've gotten new insight, Father God. Whatever your plan is in their life, Father God, I thank you for allowing them into this moment to hear this message, Father God. I thank you for what you're doing in all of our lives, Father God. I thank you that no matter what season we are in, Father God, that we can trust you, Father God. Surround us with wise counsel father god people that will encourage us and pray for us and give us sound advice father god may we run to you instead of running away from you father god may we have childlike faith again father god will we not be scared of that vulnerable transparent version of ourselves father god may we not look down on 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 our pure our pure nature of who we are, Father God. May we not be scared, Father God. May we step firm, Father God, and trust in you and follow you, Father God. May we be tall trees planted, Father God, in your foundation, in your security, Father God. May we be able to, to produce so much fruit that we are able to bless people from generation to generation, Father God. We thank you so much and we love you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Video. If you have any prayer requests, please send them to my email. You already know. Okay. So I can pray for you because I didn't get to hear them today. So I love you guys and I'll see you next month, the second Wednesday. I don't know what date that is right now for Leaders on Leaders. Okay, bye.